So we all know what happens now, especially anytime we find out that a WWE guy or gal has their contract about to expire. You start to get that speculation of, is he going to resign or is she going to resign with WWE? Why would they want to resign with WWE? Are they destined to go to AEW? Are they going to split time perhaps between AEW, other independents, and perhaps go to Japan? Like, you start to get those rumors and those buzzwords and buzzes going around. And I will say at least, if nothing else, it is cool to have that. And here's why. Because it means that for the talent, there's at least a little bit of leverage. The WWE Vince McMahon, while they are certainly by far the biggest show in town, they are not the only show in town. So it's nice for the talent to have leverage, to have at least a secondary option. They can either say, hey, I don't want to work with Vince or for this company more F them, I'm going to go somewhere else. Or if they so desire, they could potentially leverage other options or allow Vince and the company of WWE to leverage themselves into a bigger deal with this talent because they're afraid of the other option. So as you saw the reports of Cesaro's contract uh, being set to expire after WrestleMania 37, you started to see the rumors of buzz about what could happen. Certainly you had plenty of people talk about, he needs to go to AEW. AEW is where he needs to go and he should get the hell out of there because why wouldn't he want to do more and do better for himself as a talent and as a performer and all this other crap and so on and so forth. But Money talks and bullshit walks, and ultimately, we, it seemed like almost as soon as we started to see the reports about his contract being up after WrestleMania, it was reported that Cesaro and the WWE had come to an agreement on a multi-year contract extension, so Cesaro's not going anywhere, which you know certainly seems to jive with what we saw this past week on SmackDown, where you've got him wrestling Daniel Bryan and beating Daniel Bryan, you know, Seems to be an indication that they were trying to reward him, at least in the short term, for uh, showing loyalty and staying staying with WWE and um, maybe perhaps positioning for him, him for a push or maybe not. Who knows? And this is where we start to get to the silly season a little bit for fans. Because fans are going to sit there and say, why the hell would he want to re-sign with WWE? Why would he want to do that? Why would he put himself through that? Why would he work somewhere where they don't really buy into him that much and they don't push him to his maximum potential. I'm not saying that's not a fair question because it certainly is because money's important. Don't let anybody twist your fool you otherwise. But money ain't everything and it certainly is not the only thing. Like sure it's nice to get paid well and compensated well but be in a place where you feel valued and you feel important and you feel like you have growth opportunity and potential to do more and you have autonomy to really manage and drive and own your own career path. You don't get a lot of that with WWE, especially if you're somebody like Cesaro. So it is a fair question to ask, but to the fans that will start to rage about it or go to a Squared Circle Reddit page or they'll go on social media and be like, what the hell is he doing? Well, you know, I think this is where we start to get a little disconnected from reality when it comes to the wrestling bubble. And needing perhaps to better understand why somebody like a Claudio Castagnoli Cesaro would decide that he wants to stay with WWE, even though a lot of us agree, and myself somewhat included, uh, that the company has underutilized him over the years, and they've kind of pigeonholed him into a spot, and they haven't pushed him as much as they possibly could. And frankly, when you look at some of the guys that in the past several years that have been champion, what the hell is so different or worse about a Cesaro where he couldn't be in that top spot? Again, fair questions to ask. I think you got to look at this a couple of fold, though. Number one, Claudio is already 40 years old. He's been in the business for years. He knows his clock is winding down. He might be in fantastic shape, and he certainly is. And he might be able to go for several more years, and perhaps he finally can. But he might have been looking at this too, you got to understand, as this might be my last major big payday. This might be my last really big deal. And at his age of 40, that starts to carry a lot more weight and burden because you're starting to prepare for life after being a full-time wrestler. Like even he keeps himself a phenomenal shape, like at some point in time, either his body's gonna break down or mentally, like spiritually, emotionally, he's just gonna wanna divest himself from professional wrestling. So the clock is ticking for him. 
So if he can get a sure thing and he can set himself up well and get the most out of one last big contract for the WWE, who are we to judge him for that? Especially when you look at a situation where, you know, even though it seems like potentially we could be on the back end of the whole pandemic, we don't know. Like, and who knows? COVID could go away and something else similar or even worse could potentially strike. Who knows? So there's a, the point I'm getting at is there is a lot of uncertainty. And when there's a lot of uncertainty, at times, folks, especially those that are not incredibly aggressive by nature, those that are relatively adverse to significant risks, are going to tend to play it closer to the vest and play it safe. And when I look at what Claudio did here, Cesaro, by signing this deal, he played it safe. To me, he went for the sure thing. And let's be clear here. Even for those of you that want to always use the he should go to AEW and do this shit, like a lot of other people went to AEW too. That doesn't mean that they're going to be featured well or featured consistently. And frankly, if we're being realistic, what guarantees do you have that he would be featured any better or any differently in AEW than he is in WWE? You don't. You might want to pretend or believe because you're so bought into the AEW bullshit, but let's be real here. They've already got a roster glut problem. They've got too many people that they have too few spots for, and that leads to them featuring them in ways that nobody stands out, like nobody gets consistent run, consistent pushes, like all of that. So now adding a Cesaro into the mix, do you really want to do that? Yes, I got to look at this too, like from a standpoint of if a Cesaro is potentially interested in things outside of wrestling, do you go to an AEW or you stay with a company that has more twice the viewership that you know, has a larger international market share for sure. And also is getting ready to go on to the Peacock Network in another month plus. Where the access, the number of eyeballs that could potentially view him are exponentially larger than anything AEW as a company. And AEW Dynamite specifically as a show. Or even AEW as a um, entity, TNT as a network. They're not going to be able to offer him that. They're just not. They're just not. So what's that? And you also got to come to the realization, and this is where I think sometimes it's incredibly important for some of you to understand that just because you want somebody to be a top guy, just because you want somebody to be a world champion, doesn't mean that they always want to be. Not everybody wants the pressure of the top spot. Not everybody embraces that challenge. Not everybody is motivated by that. And you could look at it and say, well, why the hell would you pursue this as a passion, a dream, a career, and not want to be the best at it you possibly can be? I, I get you. Like, I'm with you. If you're going to do something, it's damn sure worth doing the best that you possibly can. That might not be the best, but you should at least control what you can control, which is being the best that you absolutely positively can, and you let the chips fall where they may. But not everybody is motivated by that. Not everybody is consumed by that. Not everybody is worried about that. There are plenty of people out there that are perfectly content and satisfied with not rocking the boat, just kind of going through the motions and, you know, picking up a paycheck and having some stability and security. And for all you know, Cesaro could be one of those guys. And while it might be frustrating to think about and hard to kind of understand, you should try to understand that sometimes some of these guys don't get into that spot because they truly don't want that spot. It's much easier to blame Vince and creative and everything else. And a lot of times they do things to hold people back. And they certainly have held Cesaro back. There's no question about that. But sometimes it's just a matter of these guys don't show the desire or the hunger to go do more. And they're content like this. You know, it's like the <laughs> fucked off Zigglers of the world. You know, they're happy being a high paid jobber. Just irritating and frustrating. It's like, why would you want to be somewhere where they don't value you that much? But hey, you're collecting your chop. So be it. Cesaro may very well be the same thing. So sometimes when, when fans are raging and ranting for these guys to get pushes and for these guys to get to the top spot and these guys wanting a belt, you might be in a situation where you care more about it than the talent does. And even if they say that they do want that, that doesn't mean that they ultimately do. It's something important to keep in mind here. Now, personally, my thoughts with Cesaro are, are kind of this, is that I like him. I do. Because I, I think he, bring, he can bring something different and unique to the table. The challenge for him is, though, I think he's a right guy, wrong era. 
if he was a guy that was around in the Attitude Era, or even like the Ruthless Aggression Era, I think he would have been more successful than he is now. Because the problem is you have so many guys that do spots and do bumps that have no personality that can't talk, that unfortunately a guy like him that doesn't quite do all the flippy stuff actually... You know, it's, it's to his detriment, he doesn't stand out. He's just another guy lost in the schmaz of kind of blasé personality, lacking the abilities on the stick. But if you had taken him back maybe 15, 20 years ago, where you still had more personalities and more star power, you had more guys that could talk, be characters, da-da-da, a guy like him, more buttoned up and serious and you know very firm, could actually stand out more. Now, as I've said before, I look at a guy like Cesaro, I don't see what's so different than so many other guys that have gotten to be the champion, like why he can't be, but these other guys can be. I think it's ridiculous. But again, he might not be motivated by that. He might not care. He might just be happy at age 40 to get the most that he can and not want to rock the boat too much. And you guys should really work to understand that. Not everybody wants to be a world champion. Not everybody wants that pressure. Not everybody wants that level of spotlight. They might think they do, and they might act like they do, and they might say that they do, but their actions don't really match what they're saying or what they're telling or alleging. So when you look at this environment of there's no guarantee AEW would use them better, what's he going to do, go to Japan and potentially risk, like if you have another big pandemic outbreak over there in Asia or in Japan specifically, you're going to sit there and be locked down in a country for a long period of time that you're not at, that maybe you don't even enjoy being in. Who knows? I don't know the man personally. I'm just I'm throwing that out there. Like These are things they have to factor. These are things they have to consider. There's no guarantee AEW would use them better. And there's no guarantee that AEW was offering the same level of contract, or even if they had made an offer, even if they would have offered him something similar or more or even close to it. Like if WWE panic bought here and offered him significantly more money for a longer period of time, who in the fuck are we to judge him for that? He's doing what he feels is best for him. And it's not harming any of you in the process. So, yeah. Be nice to see him get utilized better. But I'm not going to begrudge him for re-signing with WWE. And shame on any of you that do. That's stupid. 